is up, nerd friends? Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. We're going to take a look at the new Quick Run 8 BL150 G2. This is a new speed control in the Quick Run series. It's set up for three to six cell operation, kind of for like eight scales, seven scales, stuff like that, some of the big power applications. Uh, well, enough of that. Let's open it up and take a look. So there you have it. Ah. All electronics get songs from the angels when you open Let's them. Let's take right? a look at the speed control itself. There it is, the Quick Run WP8BL150G2. WP stands for waterproof. Like a lot of the sensorless setups that have been around the Hobbywing series, they are very resistant to the elements. And I say that because when you run in the water, a lot of times it's not the electronics that actually get damaged from the water. It's other stuff in the vehicle that gets damaged by the water and that in turn takes out the electronics. So you got to keep track of all that. Uh, it does come with the fan pre-installed inside the case. You have the external plug out here that actually doubles as your programming port. So when you go to use one of the tuning devices, uh, you'll plug that in there. It does require a tuning device to do any setting changes. It will calibrate and work fine on default settings right out of the box with nothing extra needed but there is no built-in onboard programming using the set button and the lights that is only used for calibration. All right, so the G2 series of quick run speed controls will work with any of the LED program cards or the new LCD program box pro. It does not support the Bluetooth connectivity that this does, but it will work as a standalone programmer. If you happen to have one of these boxes that has a sticker on it already and you need to know what settings the speed control has, you can't always trust these labels. They may not match your speed control depending on when the label was made and all that fun interaction stuff. So to make sure that you have the right numbers to reference, you use the instruction manual setting chart. In the instruction manual, we, as we all know, your best friend in the whole wide world, there's a setting chart and it'll tell you what your programmable items are. That'll be the item number and that'll be the value that way. So you'll be able to reference the instruction manual to tell you what all this, the numbers mean on your program card. If you wanna make it easy, you can use one of this guys because it'll just show up on all the right. screen. Up next, we're gonna cover basic calibration. So after you do an install, before you can drive it around, first thing that you have to do is calibrate the speed control so that it can learn the throttle outputs of the radio. If you do have any problems ever with operation, something changes on the radio, knobs get bumped, trim gets bumped, you can redo the calibration, but it's best to try to reset the radio and put everything back to zero, if you will. Uh, make sure your travels on your radio are up to 100 if you have any of that adjustability. And if the calibration process doesn't complete, uh, there's a link in the description down below on a troubleshooting video so you can get that sorted out. It's usually not related to the speed control itself. All right, so I have a charged battery connected. Sometimes people use a storage charge battery so it'll complete calibration calibration but won't run correctly after that so if you're going to go out and try to drive it around afterwards at least try to have a charge battery and if you do have any problems sometimes a storage charge battery can cause some lipo protection issues as well so just keep that in mind uh, plugged into channel number two of the throttle channel if you are using one of these Traxxas radios one that, that comes up all the time in service there's two channel number ones so be careful there and on these receivers if you happen to plug this in wrong and not notice because the plug will fit both ways it'll actually take out the throttle channel and make it not work so something to keep in mind if if you've been having some trouble with the calibration. Basic calibration. So my radio is turned on, uh, batteries pack is plugged in, motor is connected, and the beeps that we're going to hear are actually coming out of the motor, not out of the speed control. So if you don't have a motor connected during this process, you may not hear the beeping. You hold down the set button and turn the power on. Continue to hold the set button until this starts to flash. You see the red light there. You let go. You tap the button to set neutral. Go to full throttle and hold it there. Tap the button to set full throttle, hold it at full reverse, tap the button, and it sets full reverse. That's it. It beeps a couple times when it's done, and then after that, it is ready to go. I don't know. Can you hear the motor? Hard to hear it over there. So at neutral, you get no light. As you give it throttle, you get a red light, and as you get to full throttle, you get a green light. As you do the reverse, you get the same thing. You get red and then because it defaults to not full reverse on the speed control settings, you won't see a green light because it's telling you this isn't full speed reverse. And then on a sensor list setup, is, one thing to keep in mind is when you do calibration, you're going to calibrate it and then test the vehicle to see if throttle makes the vehicle go forward. If it does not, uh, you can switch the outside two motor wires. On the motor itself, you want the middle wire of the motor going to the middle wire of the speed control, and you can use the outside two to dictate the rotation of the forward, if you will. The, that only applies to sensorless setups. Never ever do that on a sensored setup. 
On a sensor setup, there's a motor rotation setting that you need to change. Some sensorless setups also have a motor rotation setting. So if you don't like where your wire is twisting, whatever the case may be, you can adjust with it that way. Uh, but that's basic calibration. And like I said, if you have any problems with that, check down in the link down below. We do have some troubleshooting videos to get you going. Up next, we're gonna go over the speed control tuning or programming. And for this, we're gonna use the LCD Program Box Pro. Bluetooth yeah. connectivity is not supported. Although the box supports it for the XE Run series and beyond, it does not support it for the Quick Run series, but it doesn't support the interface. So uh, the programmer goes into the fan port on the speed control. And it is marked here on the case, so you can see orientation. The negative wire goes out that direction. Same orientation as the fan. There's just a signal wire as well. So battery pack's plugged in, powered on, a little screen comes on. And then there's not going to be any data. There's not going to be any mode settings. The system settings are for the device itself. So you'll go into parameter settings. You hit down on the scroll wheel, and you'll get right into the settings. First up is the running mode that controls whether you have reverse or the rock crawl features that are there. You can put it into an instant reverse situation if you have something like that going on. The default settings are highlighted there with a little asterisk on the side. To get in and changing, you push down on the button. Uh, you make your selection by rolling the wheel. You push down on the button to select it, and then you hit save to actually save the setting into the speed control itself. We'll roll through the settings and we'll put the instruction manual up so it's a little easier to see. Cutoff voltage is the level of the battery when the lipo protection kicks in. This is adjustable to allow you to get more or less runtime out of your battery. You can raise the, the lipo cutoff to be safer or you can lower it to get more runtime out of the battery. Sometimes this has to be used for different conditions of the batteries, the plugs and stuff like that, because it saps the battery out. You need to adjust the LiPo cutoff to get a little more runtime out of it. And this has to do with when you plug the battery back in, if it takes way less milliamps than it's rated at, and the voltage may be higher than the cutoff voltages, that can be an indication that you can adjust your voltage cutoff. Most of the time, default is totally fine. No need to adjust it. And some people like to raise it to be a little bit safer because batteries are expensive. Up after that, you have punch. This is how linear the speed control is, or how punchy it is. It, the higher the setting is, the more one-to-one -one the throttle response is. There's no delay. If you give it the throttle, the speed control is going to do everything it can to make that happen. If that feels oversensitive or the speed control feels touchy or twitchy, you lower the punch, and that'll make that a lot easier to drive. A lot of times that can be used if a track gets real slippery or slick. You can lower the punch to help it be a little easier to get around. A drag brake force is brakes at neutral. So as soon as you let off and the throttle gets back to neutral, the speed control is going to apply braking force to the motor. And it can help for track applications or where you have a lot of traction and you need to get on the brakes right away as you get into a corner. Drag brake allows you to adjust that. More brakes you use and drag brake is included, kind of the higher the temperatures are going to be. So you keep an eye on stuff like that. Max brake force is the total power of the brakes. Most often, the brakes are too strong with these, these four-pole motors, so the brake power is reduced down to 50%, just so you're not doing nose wheelies or locking them up, so to speak. You can raise or lower that as well. And the same on the reverse. Sometimes reverse is hard to use, like pushing the throttle forward or using the reverse with your, your throttle hand is not ultra easy. So turning that down makes it a little easier to drive. Sometimes people don't want full reverse because it can cause some problems when you're getting right back on the throttle as well for you know, doing wheelies. Throttle range or neutral range is the zone of the dead band of the throttle, if you will. The speed control has a neutral, and that throttle range or neutral range is how big the speed control recognizes in that zone. So the larger that is, the bigger your neutral area is. The reason this is adjustable is some radios maybe have, they all have mechanical throttle pots that can have a little bit of wear and not always return to exactly the same spot. And that can make the either drag brake or the reverse not super consistent. So if you have an inconsistent reverse or inconsistent drag brake feel, increasing this throttle range or neutral range will help the speed control deal with the inconsistency that's happening. Timing is electronic timing advance. On, on this speed control, the quick run series is in general, it applies across the entire range. So it's always gonna have the timing applied. And this allows you to basically make the motor faster. Electronic timing advance is the speed control over firing the motor instead of where it's I guess you'd say normally be firing. And this is adjustable to help with motor performance. Sometimes zero timing on a sensorless setup can be kind of bad. It doesn't run very well, so a little bit of timing helps. And the higher the RPM is, kind of the more timing sometimes you need to run. Uh, so this is adjustable so that you can fine tune all of that. There's 
in general speaking, the default timing is all you really need and more is going to be faster and perhaps more temperature. So it's one that you got to use kind of carefully and one we don't really mess with too often. I kind of leave it default or I turn it down. Uh, LiPo cells is to set the voltage range that the speed control is looking for. So if you're only going to run one type of battery, you can go in and set it to the specific number of cells that you're going to use. That way you don't get things mixed up. It's just another safety measure that you can have so that if you don't if you were to say have a three cell and maybe a four cell or a six cell sitting around and you grabbed a dead six cell, it might try to recognize it. So this allows you to be a little bit more specific about the battery that it's going to use. Uh, the battery voltage or the BEC voltage is the power to the servos and the receiver and whatever else you have plugged into the receiver. And if you have higher voltage servos, this is adjustable so that you can get the most out of those servos. You don't necessarily have to adjust this for HV servos. Most of the HV servos work fine on a lower voltage. They're just not going to be as strong as fast. If you get down to the bottom using either of these guys, you could, there is a reset. So if you make changes or you don't like them, you can use the reset parameters to get back and uh, re reset back to factory defaults. One more thing to note is as you're making setting changes, you do have to hit enter to, or you have to push down to select it and then save to actually save it. And same applies here. As you change that number, you have to hit save to actually get it to stick in the speed control. Uh, sometimes you'll go through, make all the changes, never hit save, nothing sticks in the speed. All right, now that we got all that fun stuff out of the way, here's some of the more boring things. How, how big is it? We're going to go, oh, it's a 60 millimeter length officially. It's just a touch under that depending on how hard you squeeze on that guy. And it's a 40, let's see, they're 48, call it, 48 millimeter length or width. And to the top, the very tippy top of the fan, keeping it kind of loose, is a 40 millimeter height on that guy. It has 10 gauge wire pre-installed. It's set up with no plugs out of the box. You can set this up for single uh, battery pack or dual battery packs for the packs in that's series. A, the motor bullets, I think that's a common one. These are going to be the six and a half millimeter bullets. It's just, well, you know, plastic calipers here and the angle that I got it at. But yeah, these are these guys are 6.5 millimeter bullet plugs for the motor. Uh, some other specs to keep in mind, BEC, uh, the BEC is a six amp rated switching mode BEC. It'll do six volts or 7.4 volts. So the 8BL150, as the name implies, is rated at 150 amps. That is based off manufacturing specifications on the MOSFETs. A lot of times we don't see numbers like that in the real world, but the specifications are you to compare a given brand in their given series. So to compare to other quick run series speed controls or maybe even a max series speed control, stuff like that. This guy is rated for three to six S. And as we mentioned before, it can be set up for single or dual battery pack configuration, dual three cells in series is the same as a six cell. If you do do that setup, make sure that the battery packs match, don't mix and match capacities or voltages or anything like that. The 8BL150 G2 is also available in combos with a 4268 size or a 4274 size motor. Uh, that's 42 millimeter by 68 or 74 millimeter length. And they're available in two different KVs. The 4268 is available in a 2600 KV and the 4274 is available in a 2000 kV. I actually have this setup in my 7th scale Mojave and it's pretty impressive. The stock setup that's in that truck isn't bad at all, but this thing for the value that you, I mean it's a hundred and I think 30 maybe $120 combo that's full-blown ripper. I only ran it on four cell in that Mojave myself and well here I have some video of it. I'll, I'll put that at the end of the video so you can see what I'm talking about, but very impressed with this guy. The only thing I really changed was the motor also I obviously I ran the the 4274 2000 kV motor and I ran that with the punch setting turned all the way up everything else was on default and like I said only on a four cell battery so now as we mentioned there will be a link in the description down below for the hard information on the speed control itself as well as the combos and anything else I may have overlooked here or you might have questions about so check those links out Hobbywing also does a podcast it's called RC stuff powered by Hobbywing we give away a free Hobbywing combo each and every episode, all you have to do to find out how to enter to win is listen to an episode. If you do have any questions for us, maybe some comments, some concerns, need some tech support, you can reach us directly. Send us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. As always, folks, thanks for watching. New every Tuesday, it's the Charlie Show right here on the Hobbywing official YouTube channel. We will see you all next time. And this is only on 4S.
Whoa, 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 suck. If you haven't seen the peacock pit before, this place is great, and we've kind of changed up the way we run the lap to get a little more lap out of the layout, and take take the straightaway out. Actually, help we get way more runtime. Everything runs cooler, but you still get tons of shredding. This thing rips. Yeah, it's the Quick Run WP8BL150 G2 sensorless setup with the 4274. This is a 2000 kV motor, so beefy guy. And this is the, the Mojave. These are seventh scale, they call them. It's a pretty dialed rig. I like this thing a lot. Beefy drivetrain, handles decent enough to put on a good show, so it's a good time.